Okay, so now we're looking at more rules, okay? More things to know. And what we're going to be talking about today is working with parallel lines. Do you see this? These are two parallel lines. They put these little arrows on them. This means that these are parallel. Two L's, E L. Okay, so those are parallel. And then if you have a line that crosses two parallel lines, this is called the transversal. So when you have two parallel lines and you cut it with the transversal, some unique things happen. Okay, so like this angle here. equals this angle here. So I look at it, if you took the two, say this was a slide, and you took this entire line and you just slid it down in here, do you see x would fall on top of x? Right? So what am I trying to say? If I just slid right down, it would fall right on. Right? So that's why those are the same angle. So this angle here would equal this angle here. Now, what do we know about, say I call this y, what do I know about x and y? Equal 180. Okay, so don't forget about that. Now, see this y, if this entire line slid down, this would fall on top of here, wouldn't it? So those are called corresponding angles. This angle corresponds to this angle. This angle corresponds to this one. Okay? Now, what is this angle right here? You see where I am right now? What's that angle right there? X or Y? Y, very good. Because opposite angles are equal, and these two should add up to 182, shouldn't they? Because if you turn your head a little bit, do you see how these two on this line make up 180? And then what about this one here? What should this be? X. Oh, my X is in red, so I'll do a good thing there. Okay, now let's come down here. So what would this angle be right here? Y. And this angle here? X. Okay, so do you see that these are corresponding angles? Here to here, here to here, right? If the entire these four all slid down, they would fall on top of these four, and they would be exactly the same, okay? So, uh, so these two would be what we call corresponding angles. Okay, they often will make an F-shaped pattern. Now, it depends how you look at it, right? But if I was to, if I come up here with my awesome highlighter pen, if I was to draw an F, it's kind of like an F. If it's on top, top, they stay, and on the bottom, bottom, okay? But I like to just take this entire run and just slide it on top, whatever would fall on each other. Those are called corresponding angles. Okay? So if I was talking about angle B here, oops, which one would be corresponding? Should be right there, shouldn't it? Okay? C, what would be corresponding with C, should be down there. Do you see? It's under the parallel line beside the transversal. should be under this parallel line by the transversal. Okay, and if I had A here, or no, well let's call it D. If I had D here, that would be D. Okay, those are all corresponding angles. And they're all equal, right? So corresponding angles are equal.
Okay. Now, on your own, I'm not going to show you how to do it. See if you can do it without being, right? Use your problem solving ability. What is angle A? What is angle B? What's angle A? What's angle B? Just to prove to you that I don't have to show you how to do it, you can figure it out. Okay, what's angle A? What would it be? Angle B? Good. Okay, now see if you can find all the angles on the next one. Now maybe this looks a little weird, so you can actually extend your parallel lines. You can even extend the transversals if you want, and see if you can figure out what D, so C, D, E, and F, what would they equal? You can even write the angle right inside. What would it, right by the angle letter. Okay, what's a, where do you start with this one? What angle should you find first? C. C would be the easiest one to find. What is it? 124. Okay, what's another easy one? D? E. E would be 132. Okay, so what is D? 56. 180 minus 24, right? Because these two make up a straight line. And what's F? 48, right? Okay. The next, so we've talked about corresponding. We, to do these, we needed to know corresponding angles and straight angles, right? Now there's another one we need to know, and that's called alternate interior angles. Okay, so that works out. Now if we have our two para parallel lines with the transversal, what's that saying? In the Z, these are interior. See how they're inside? Both of them are inside the parallel lines. Right? Here's my two parallel lines, and I'm inside them. It's called an interior angle, right? Interior means inside. And you see how these two will be equal. So that would be 50. Now I can prove to you why it would be 50, because if this is 50, shouldn't this be 50? And now, look, they're corresponding angles now, aren't they? So I used my opposite angles to prove that this should be 50, right? Because these two are 50, these two are 50, therefore, alternate interior angles are 50. Okay? So this one's just stressing it over and over. Okay, now, if this is 60, this should be 60, right? Now this one you have to turn a little bit to see the Z because it's like this, right? But if this is 40, this is 40. And you know, sometimes you need to extend your parallel lines in the transversal. But do you see again, now we can have the Z going either way, but this Z is going like this. And if this is 105, 
This is 105. So, again, these are called alternate interior or sometimes they're just called alternate angles. Okay, spend some time and just see if you can find all of the angles in A. So I need A, B, and C. So depending how you're thinking, maybe you did this different than the person beside you. And that's, again, stuff that comes out on the whiteboards when people go, why did you do A first? And you're like, because this. Oh, I did C first because of this way. Oh, yeah, I would have never thought about that one. Yeah, that worked too. Okay, so which angle did you start with? What's a good one? Hmm? You did B? What is B? Because of why? They are alternate interiors, right? Okay, what's the next one? Okay, what's A? 47. Because it also is a Z or a Z, wherever you grew up, right? Now, how do you find C? Okay, and what do you get? 64. Now, it's 64 for two reasons. Why? This whole triangle has to add up to 180, doesn't it? And these three angles must add up to 180. So there's two reasons that 64 should work. Okay, B is a little bit more challenging. See if you can get all the angles in B. Okay, what's the first one I should be getting? E? How, how do you get E? Why'd you divide by two? So what kind of triangle is that? Isosceles triangle, good. So E is, what do we get? Okay, got that so far. Now what do we do? Which one? What'd you get for D? How do you get 42 though? 
right? Because there's a Z. Right? These are two parallel lines with things. So this must be 42 as well. And then how do you get F? 180, right? Minus 180, so then we're getting... Okay? And then it makes sense. Um, these two are corresponding, aren't they? These two would also be corresponding angles. If you look at it and you you got your two parallel lines if you put them on top of each other. Okay, so one more thing that we want to talk about, and that is the what we call co interior angles. Now, interior means inside. Remember, so I have my two parallel lines and then the transversal. Do you see how these are both inside, but they're on the same side? They're not alternate. These two are not equal. Do you see how they don't even look equal? This one's smaller, this one's bigger. But one thing we know about these two is they will always equal 180 degrees together. Okay? So we call, they're called C angles because they do make like a C. Like if you look at, right, it's a square C. And your C can also be backwards too, right? So co-interior, that is our C. So for them, the sum equals 180 degrees. Okay, so this one here, if you think about it, this is a parallelogram, okay? So here's my two parallel lines, and they're cut by two parallel lines. So we know this is 48. What could this one be? These aren't corresponding, are they, these two? These two would be corresponding. This would be corresponding, right? Those are corresponding. But we the know, like sometimes you have to look at it sideways, but do you see how we have our C? So this must equal what? 132. So it shows that these are equal because they are in a C. So there's many ways to do a C. There's also, we could do a C this way. So these two must add up to 180 as well. So that would be my 132. And again, if I was doing corresponding, that would be 132 as well. Making this one 48. And do you see how we have our Z of my alternate angles are equal? My interiors equal 180. Right? This would be 132 because these are opposite each other. Do you see how these are opposite? So I can call that. These are 48. Right? I can start naming angles everywhere now because of the rules that we have. Okay? So in summary, remember, corresponding angles are equal. Alternate angles are equal because alternate is the Z. Remember the Z? And co-interior Co-interior are our C's. And your Z could also go like that. I know it's a lame Z, but use your imagination. So the Z's, the alternate angles are equal, and co-interior angles are supplementary. Remember, supplementary means equal 180. What does it mean with equal 90? Complementary, yes. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and nine.